In the new issue of Fine Woodworking Magazine, contributing editor Chris Gochner does an article on fuming white oak with ammonia. And basically all that is is ammonia is a chemical that reacts with the tannins found in some wood. White oak has a lot of tannins in it and tannins are responsible for darkening wood. And the ammonia reacts with the tannins and darkens the wood. In theory, it was back in the day, it was supposed to make white oak look like English brown oak. Don't know how true that is, but it makes white oak look awesome. I know that. Generally, it's been thought that you needed to have industrial strength ammonia. This stuff is 28% ammonium hydroxide, which is pretty hard to get, to be honest with you. We couldn't get it locally. We had to order it. John Benson is definitely on some list in some sketchy building somewhere now. But we thought it would be cool to compare the results of industrial strength ammonia with the easier to get janitorial strength ammonia coming in at 10% and the super easy to get available at any grocery store or hardware store common household ammonia. Is it just a matter of letting it sit longer or is it just never going to be the same thing? Let's check it out. Before we get started, you want to take this stuff seriously. So, splash proof goggles, heavy, heavy duty safety gloves, and ammonia rated cartridges for your respirator. The pink ones ain't going to cut it this time. You got to get the ammonia rated ones. That industrial stuff is not messing around. I really thought I was being super careful, but as soon as I opened that up, my eyes just start watering like crazy. I So everybody, everybody says do this in a well ventilated area. This is why I'm doing this in the shop is I want to have control over the time lapse video and I'm regretting it right now because my shop stinks of ammonia. Uh, it's not like crazy, but that industrial strength, I would not even think about opening that bottle in a closed room. That's pretty intense. <sighs> it's gonna go outside. I don't, I don't need this. All right, so here's the deal. I brought the whole rig out to the potting shed. Um, if you're worried about ventilation in here, right behind you is a missing door and there's broken window panes and everything. So it's really, really classy. All right, it's gonna be here for a couple days. They're right next to each other so that they're getting the same amount of sunlight and everything. It's as controlled as I can get it without feeling like I'm gassing myself out of my shop. three days of fuming I was not as diligent as I had hoped going and pulling out samples every six hours that was silly to think I would be but we definitely have some results so over here on the left this is raw wood and going from zero hours up to 72 hours 
Top row is household ammonia. Middle row is janitorial strength. Bottom row is industrial strength ammonia. So obviously it gets darker as it's in there longer. <laughs> we all knew that. Um, one of the interesting things is though when they start to match up. So industrial strength ammonia at 24 hours is about the same darkness as janitorial strength after 41 hours. 41 hours of industrial strength, about the same, eh, a little bit darker on 48 hours with janitorial. So they match up. Basically, if you're looking for dark fumed oak, you can get it with any one of these. You just need to leave it in a long time. Here's 24 hours of industrial strength ammonia. It's about the same as 72 hours with household ammonia. Again, it'll get you there. It's just going to take a while. The differences in the shades is not dramatic. It's just a matter of time. What is really dramatic, and I just cut these apart and I was blown away. What is really dramatic is how deep the ammonia goes. So, again, these samples are our three-day samples. This is an extreme scenario. But after three days, the household ammonia only goes down maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Maybe. Janitorial strength, about an eighth of an inch. And industrial strength, straight through. All the way, 100% penetration. Um, that is the main difference to me, is I think you're going to get a lot more penetration from the industrial strength ammonia. If you are just fuming a piece that is assembled, I think you can get away with household strength ammonia or janitorial strength easily. If you're going to be shaping or planing or sanding after the fuming, I would recommend minimum janitorial strength and maybe get the industrial strength. Um, the penetration of the industrial strength is incredible, but I would feel fine sanding and doing some light planing after the fact with janitorial strength. Try it out on a project, do some test samples, um, be safe with it. Use gloves if you can, use a respirator, definitely. Chris Gochner's article in issue 282 is going to tell you everything you need to know about fuming, how he does it, how he sets up a tent for large pieces, and what he expects results-wise. So I've filmed this in March of 2020, and as a lot of you know, we're going through some stuff right now. Shortage of nitrile gloves, shortage of respirators. So maybe this isn't a great time to try out fuming. Um, be safe with it, be diligent, but if you can, you should be donating your respirators and your gloves to your local medical response teams. They need them a heck of a lot more than we need them right now.